Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the Lee County Clerk of Courts July 2021 webinar titled Investigations 101, How to Search and E-Certify the Court Records. I am Kevin Carnes, the Chief Operating Officer at the Clerk's Office. This webinar has been approved by the Florida Bar for one general CLE credit and one technology CLE credit. Information will be provided at the end of this webinar for your registration. I want to thank Lauren Ball with the Lee County Bar Association for partnering with us to secure these CLEs. This webinar is a part of a series titled Your Gateway to the Courts, which promotes awareness of the many valuable resources available from your clerk's office. Our goal is to provide you with useful information to help you navigate the complicated court system. If you're not savvy with technology and you need assistance, please contact the clerk's office for assistance with completing printed forms. We also have forms available at our self-help center located on the first floor of the Justice Center. The clerk is also a proud partner with the Lee County Aid Society to provide free attorney consultations. When you need additional one-on-one -on -one legal expertise, you can schedule a virtual appointment by visiting our website, www.leadclerk.org slash appointment. Appointment times are posted every Monday. And now, the moment you've all been waiting for, more details on how to search the court record. We'll now share our screen so you can get those details. Okay, so we wanted to start today's uh, webinar off with some general information uh, that you all may or may not know. Um, and it's about the governance of our court records inquiry website. And it's governed by Florida Supreme Court order, uh, which allows the clerk to provide the public uh, with online access to many of our court records, our indexes, uh, the dockets, and many of the non-confidential uh, document images. Uh, Florida law, rules, and statutes uh, govern who has access to these records online and in person. And you'll hear us frequently reference an access security matrix that outlines what types of access you have based upon your relationship to the case. The types of records that we have available online are pretty diverse. Um, we have civil, criminal, family, probate, and juvenile. And you can see that there's a variety of case types listed um, that are available on our website, which are, again are dependent based upon your relationship to the case. There are 14 user roles defined by the Supreme Court via the access security matrix. Uh, and in global terms, there are three main levels of access, uh, which again is governed based upon your relationship to the case. Um, the public has access to case types which have little to no sensitive information. And those types of cases are civil traffic and small claims. There really are no sensitive information like social security numbers or other protected information. The next layer up would be confidential documents and case types that um, your access is increased based upon your relationship. So think adoptions and juveniles, warrants to arrest and guardianship. Uh, access goes up to people who are law enforcement, attorney of record, DCF, government agencies and the like. Uh, and the top tier of access is sealed records uh, via rule, statute, or judicial order. And that access is pretty limited to the court and the clerks of court. So we won't have to get into this slide too terribly much, but this is the access security matrix that drives your access uh, online. Uh, you can see that it's a kind of a grid pattern. So on the left there is the, the case types that are that are governed by the court system. In the top middle, right underneath the yellow banner are the 14 roles um, that govern the access. And if you follow uh, the grid, um, you can see that there's letters in the middle there and that determines which layer of access you are given. Uh, and the legend is in the top left hand corner there. Um, A's and B's are really restricted to the clerks, the courts, uh, law enforcement, and the state's attorney's office. Uh, C, D, and E are really to the attorney of record, general government, and registered user. And then as you go down that legend to E, F, and G, uh, those are the case types that we mentioned before, whether they're confidential or not. Uh, and so I'm going to go into the rest of the I'm going to introduce Louisa Wan, who is our lead clerk in court records. She's been with the clerk's office for five years and has plenty of experience helping customers one-on-one. -on -one. 
Among her many duties, she handles sealing and expunging records and maintaining confidential information in accordance with the court orders. She's going to walk you through the court records inquiry process, how to search those records, and ultimately how to get an e-certified document through that same process. If you have any questions throughout this webinar, please submit them in the Q&A box and we'll answer them at different points throughout the presentation. Otherwise, we'll also do a question and answer session at the end. Louisa. Thank you, Kevin. Uh, good, good afternoon, all. Thank you for joining us today. Now, Kevin has given us a lot of information about the matrix, uh, the court records inquiry system. Now let's go over how to navigate through the court records inquiry system. Uh, register as a user, uh, conduct the record search, request for redacted documents, request for electronic certified documents, <clears throat> read your electronic certified documents, and validating the certified documents. Now, we cannot give any legal advice at the Lee County Clerk of Courts, but um, if you are seeking for legal advice, we ask that you reach out to an attorney or um, visit your local law library. Um, and again, if you have any questions, please place them in the Q&A box at the bottom. So once you get to our homepage for court records and uh, the court records inquiry system, you'll jump into the searching criteria um, and the search tips. But we're going to concentrate on how to register um, as a user for the court records inquiry system. Now on the top, you have multi uh, different areas where you can directly do a record search, register, log in, or look for our frequently asked questions. Um, so we'll go to the login screen. And the login screen, if you have credentials, you'll place your email and password. If you don't have um, a username and proceed to registering, you have the registration options at the top where you would click on the register, or um, if you don't have have an account, click here to register. <clears throat> now, once you get to the registration screen, um, there is a lot of information that we need in order to verify your registration. Um, I would say that we do have important requirements for party access level and attorney of record um, access level, which are referenced on the screen here. So if you do fall under those categories, please read um, and review those before proceeding. And we will go over those um, requirements as well throughout the presentation. Now, when it comes to registering, we do need mul uh, multiple information. We need your email address, your first and last name, the access type that you are requesting, and, when you and creating a password. We are going to go over different levels of the access type, which we will do uh, for party access, attorney of record, and regist registered users. Um, let's go over registered users first. Reg registered users are just for um, non-related cases and you are seeking for public information, just looking through specific or different case types. Um, Kevin did reference before that even though you are a registered users, um, user, you are limited to the documents or the case that you can view by Florida statutes. Um, so once you have your information for your email address, your name, um, the registered users, user access type and password, you would continue to submitting your registration. And from here, you'll get a thank you screen uh, for registering. Um, you'll also get a, a note here that you will receive an email shortly and that you would need to confirm your email in order to uh, continue with the registration. Now here we have an example of how that email looks like. You'll get the thank you for registering with the Lee County Clerk of Courts and the link to um, confirming your email along with the terms and conditions that you will need to review. You'll be redirected back to the site for the terms and conditions, and you will review um, and read over the terms and conditions. Once you've reviewed that, you will um, hit the check box for the agreement. And once you've checked that off, you would accept it. Now, once this has been accepted, you'll be redirected back to the login page. And from here, you'll log in and conduct your record search. 
Now let's talk about party access. Party access is in relation to any case that is in reference um, to you. So if you are related to a case, uh, you would fill in your registration information and then you would hit party access. From here, you would click a uh, place a case number. The place, the I'm sorry, the case number will no longer be grayed out. So from here, you will place the case number, and our system does read and validate that case number. So if the case number is incorrect or it cannot read that it's a true and accurate case number, you would see a red X. Now, if it's a true and valid case number, you should see a green check mark. So once you see the green check marks, you should be able to submit your registration. And let's look at attorney of record. Attorney of record, if you are attorney of record of a specific case or an attorney of record that will need to add on to cases or need access to different cases, you will see that the bar number text box is no longer grayed out. From here, you will place your bar number and then submit from a uh, submit registration. Once you've submitted your registration for both party access and um, attorney of record, the process is similar. You'll get a thank you screen, and then you will also see a PDF attachment. This PDF attachment is in reference to a registration agreement where you will fill out the uh, your information based on the, the information you filled out um, at the registration screen and what your access level is. From here, you'll see the terms and conditions. But at the end of page three, there is a signature where you will need to sign, also have it notarized. After it's been notarized and filled out completely, this agreement does need to be turned into us, the Glee County Clerk of Courts. And you will get an email telling you how to submit those requests, uh, that, that agreement through um, by mail or in-person hand delivery, or by simply forwarding it to us at the email provided on your email. After you've received the email, there is a confirmation um, link where you will still need to confirm your account. From here, once you click on the link, you will get a confirmation that your account has been confirmed. However, this is not, um, your account will not be active yet. Your account uh, will not be active until we receive the registration agreement. After the ag registration agreement has been received, we ask that we, uh, you give us five business days after the receipt of the registration to complete the verification process. Now, what happens if you requested as a registered user and you need party access level? Well, once you've created an account and have access to your account under your username, under my accounts, you should see the option to request new level access. From here, you'll follow the steps of the access that you need and proceed to getting that new access. Now that we've gone over how to register, let's talk about how to conduct a record search. There's a lot of different areas where you can search for a case using the name, the date of birth, the business name, case number, citation, the date range of that case, the assigned attorney or the assigned judge, also a bar number. Now, we do have a few helpful search tips that are located on the right side of our records research page. Um, and a good helpful uh, tip for utilizing is our wildcard search. This searches cases by partial name followed by an asterisk when unsure of a spelling. For our purposes, we're going to use a case that we have an example. So I will be placing this case number in our case number search and then search the case. And you should see the docket of that case information come up. You'll see the case party information, who the judge is assigned, who the parties are. You'll see whether it's a criminal or civil case, depending on the details of that case. Now, you, we do have a few different items that you will see in the docket, but first let's go over the icons that you do see. We have a variety of icons depending on your access, which are our public view, which means the documents are available to the, uh, to the public. Our VOR icon, which means the document is currently um, locked and it has to go under 
clerks review because if there may be sensitive information. Our confidential icon, which is uh, available to speci specified groups determined um, by the Florida Supreme Court and our sealed documents, which are restricted and not available to for public viewing. Along, and also our request pending icon, which follows for the VOR icon, which we'll go over what that looks like. And then we have our recording and redaction icons. Now we have, um, before we move to what those icons are for VOR and pending requests, let's look at what an anonymous user and a registered user looks like for domestic relations. If you register, um, for example, you see on the left hand side that um, you have more of availability to view documents. However, as an anonymous user for domestic relation cases, uh, you aren't able to see the documents. You'll only be able to see the date of the document, the description and the docket number. For anonymous users for criminal, you are limited to what you can see depending on the Florida statute. And um, if you need to request for any documents, you would need to submit a email address located at the top for you to proceed to viewing any documents. Now, if a document is locked and it requires VOR, it simply needs it needs to go over um, under clerk's review just in case there's any sensitive information that needs to be redacted. So once the document is selected, um, you will see the icon for the pending request appear. This just means that your request has been submitted and the document is now under review. You will also place, I'm sorry, you will also receive notifications through your email that your request has been submitted and what the case number was, what the document name was. You will also get an email confirming that your document review has been completed, confirming that the case um, the case for that document has been made viewable to the public and now you can log back in and view the document. Once the document is made viewable, you should see the green icon appear, which you can click on the green icon and the document is now viewable for your viewing. Now let's go over how to request for electronic certified documents. This is only available when documents have been made viewable to the public in the green status icon. Once that icon is available under the request certified documents, you'll be able to check off the document you are requesting. And from there, you will proceed to certif uh, certifying the checkout. You'll be directed to a screen where the document certification terms and conditions will appear. We ask that you review these terms and conditions, read over them, and once you've come to an agreement, you check the box and then proceed to checkout. From here, you'll see that um, you have all the documents that you requested, and the certification for each document is $8. Uh, from here, you can re remove any documents that you may no longer need. Um, and then you would proceed to checkout. We ask that you fill out your order information, which is your name, your phone number, and your um, email address. You will be redirected to uh, myfloridacounty.com to finalize a purchase, where you'll place in your credit card information and your billing information. Now, once you've hit continue, you will come into a verification screen where you will confirm the information and make sure it's correct. Once you've confirmed this information, you would hit submit, and then you will see your payment uh, be successfully processed, um, and you will receive an email with that payment confirmation as well. Your order ID will also be available with the date of the purchase and the time. Now, once you're here, um, the return button at the bottom, you would click that in order to view your purchase. This is where you will pull your certified documents and you will also see your payment confirmation. Now, once you get to the screen, you will click on the link under certificate to view your certified document. Once you've hit that link, you should see your certified document from here. This is where you will be able to save your documents, print them, um, and you can print as many as you need. Um, instead of purchasing for 10 certified documents, now you can purchase one and print as 10 
or as many as you need for those uh, copies. Now, you will also get an email um, similar to this for your purchase. Now, the link provided in this email for your certified documents is only valid for 30 days. So we ask that you make sure you save your documents to your computer for any future use. Now let's go over what certified uh, document looks like. You'll see that your certified document, you have the front cover that has the document information, the document name, the case number, and a unique code. You will also see the certification statement and how to verify your document um, to make sure that the certification is true and valid. Now each certification is unique um, because they all have a unique code. This makes it a lot harder to fabricate, fabricate and a lot easier to validate. We also have QR codes on the front cover, which you can use your smartphone to verify and validate your certified document. From here, you'll see on the second page that at the bottom of the certified document, you'll have our statements. Certifying the document is true and accurate in our official records and the digital signature uh, from the Lee County Clerk of Courts with the date and time of the certified document. Now let's go over how to verify those certified documents. On the cover sheet from your certified document, you will see that there is a link on there as well. And once you've reached that link, you will come to an, a doc, document authentication screen. From here, you will place your unique code found on the cover sheet or throughout the pages and place them on the verify text box. You have to ensure that you place your dashes because without the dashes, it will not be able to verify your document. Once you've placed your unique code and verified the document, you will come across the verification screen. You'll see our clerk seal along with the a submitter or submitters of information, the Lee County Clerk of Courts, and the valid uh, publishing code that has been verified. You also have the option to download the original image, which does not mean it's the certified, a copy of the certified document. This is only a copy of the case, what's filed in the case management system. Now, what happens if you are unable to locate a document or a case online? Um, we do have an option where you can submit a records request via our website. And this access is also applicable depending on the law and statutes. So on our leaclerk.org website, under public records request, um, we do have the option where you can submit your records request. And from here, you also have the option and the link for verifying your e-certified documents if you ever need the link. So once you when you do need to submit your records request, you will hit submit records request and you'll be directed to a page where you will select if you are an attorney agency or court, you're just seeking court records and information. Once you've selected which one best fits you, you'll be directed to the login screen where you log in. And if you don't have credentials, you can create an account. Now we do have an option to submitting requests anonymously. And we ask if you do continue with submitting a request anonymously that you place a contact information just in case we need to reach out or ask for further clarification. So that brings the end of my presentation. Thank you, Louisa, for joining me in this presentation, and I hope all of our participants found the information very helpful. We have a couple of tips and tricks that we'd like to go over with you all just uh, to make your user experience a little bit better. Um, it's things that we've learned along the way that we've heard from the user community. Um, so the first one uh, was just a reiteration of what we said earlier in the presentation about uh, how long you have access to your documents uh, once you have them certified. Um, and so they're in the My Documents tab on the Court Records Inquiry tab uh, for 30 days after purchase. Um, and you can do that, you can access that link for 30 days without incurring uh, an additional fee. Um, if you don't have access to, to a case, um, is it also a frequent question uh, that we get? Uh, and one of the top reasons you can't see a case is because you're not logged into your account. It's very easy to get to our Court Records Inquiry website and search for a case and skip the step where you put your username and password. Uh, so that's the first thing we remind everyone is to make sure you're actually logged into to the, 
to the system. And the second one is to make sure that the case you have access to is part of your My Cases uh, dropdown. So when you go to the top, there'll be a section there where you can actually see the cases you're associated with. And it's a lot easier than using uh, the search box that Louisa uh, showed you. Um, the other frequent question that we get is if there are any outside agencies not currently accepting an electronically certified document. Um, and to our knowledge, the Social Security Administration is the only agency that is prohibited of, of the e-certified document. Uh, their policy allows for them to accept e-certified records, uh, but they're really looking at it as an implementation of their policy. So they're getting their satellite offices on the same page in regards to that, that process. If you have any questions, uh, you all can call our office. We have a great uh, team of customer service representatives that are ready to answer your questions. Um, and you can do that by calling 239-533-5000. Uh, I wanna thank you for your time today. Uh, this webinar is part of the series called Your Gateway to the Courts. Uh, the next session is going to be on August 25th at 2 p.m. Uh, and it's going to be how to e-file a divorce case. Uh, you all are the first to know of future webinar webinars by subscribing to our newsletter at www.leadclerk.org slash subscribe or by following us on social media. Uh, the clerk has a Facebook, a Twitter, and an Instagram account. As I mentioned earlier, this session has been approved by the Florida Bar for one general CLE credit and one technology CLE credit. Uh, attorneys, you may want to grab a, a pen and legal assistance if you want to do this for your attorneys as well. I'm going to give the reference number. The reference number is 21054411 and the letter N as in Nancy. And we'll be sure to email this reference number to you following this presentation. I want to thank you all for joining us and have a great day.